I'm feeling really good and I can't wait to do this. It's going to be an amazing video. I'm super excited about it. It's going to be fun for all the viewers to watch. Nice. I would like, I would like to watch this video. So would I. Alright, for this week's episode, we're going to take a break from the norm. Instead of showing you a fabrication video, we're going to show you some great methods for spraying blood for use in your next gore scene or film. These are amazing processes for decapitations, through and through bullet holes, or headshot wounds. Josh, why don't you explain what we're working with here? Well, I gotta tell you, this is by far one of my favorite effects to do because it's simple, effective, and you get to play with blood. And so what you're gonna need is an air compressor, a water extinguisher, some tubing, a couple of hose clamps, a screwdriver, and some fake blood. Wanna do this? Let's do this. Cool. All right, guys, so we had this silicone leg that we used on a film a while back, and in the scene, he had a severed leg, He's holding it up, he's screaming, and it's squirting blood. And guess how we did that? Compressed air. Compressed air. So Josh and I are going to demonstrate to you today how we rigged that effect so that you can use it in your film. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is safety. In order to fill this pressure extinguisher, we got to take the nozzle off. But if you take it off and there's pressure in the tank, it'll go flying and it could potentially hit you in the face. So, what we're going to do is pull the pin out and check for pressure. There's nothing in here we're safe to take it off. Let's do that. Now, mine's loose, so I can do it by hand, but I also have my wrench right here in case it was tight. I can loosen it up. All right, cracked her open. Now what I'm gonna do is try and stay clean because blood gets messy, so I'm gonna put the blood into this orange bucket and then pour it into the extinguisher. I like to put roughly a gallon uh, unfortunately, we don't have a gallon. This is a little bit less, but this will be more than enough to get the job done. So once you have the blood ready to pour, you pour that first into the extinguisher. Today, we're using Sin Blood. We spent two years on this recipe just to get the color perfect. We are in love with this color, with this blood, which you can find on our website if you're interested in getting some. Now, moving on, we have our liquid in the tank, but in order to get the liquid to shoot out, we gotta fill it with pressure. So what we're gonna do is screw the top on tightly and then add our pressure. Let's screw the top on. Now, you can do it by hand just to get it on there and get it down, but once you get to the bottom, you're going to want to tighten it with a wrench. You don't want any of that pressure leaking out. So I just spin it around. Actually, I like to spin the tank. Now that's good and tight by hand, but let's use a wrench to make sure it's really tight. We don't want anything escaping out of the seal. Yep, that's on there. So now we're ready to fill up the extinguisher. You'll notice there's a gauge right here, and on the other side is where you put in your air. It's just like a bike tire or a car tire, so you need that fitting to get on there to put the air in. So we're using the same kind of nozzle you'd fill up your car with or your bike tire. It fits right on the tip of this, and it will inject the air into the extinguisher. Let's do that. I normally like to go up to 90 PSI, and the hot tops is 100 PSI, but for this particular gag, we don't need a lot of pressure. I might just go up to 50. So we're gonna watch this gauge until it gets, right now it's at zero, green's 100. I'm gonna go in the middle. It takes a little bit of time, but it'll get there eventually. You can hear the bubbles rising inside through the liquid. Now that should be just about perfect. What we're gonna do from here is hose clamp the vinyl tube to the extinguisher and connect those two sides. Another thing we wanted to mention is you can find a pressure extinguisher on eBay for 30 bucks. Sometimes they go for 50, either way they're relatively cheap. Now we're gonna attach the tube to the extinguisher. This is where the hose clamp comes in handy. We like it because it's nice and tight and it's stronger than a zip tie. If you're gonna do it, do it right. There's a lot of pressure running through the extinguisher, so you wanna make sure your two hoses don't pop away from each other. So get that guy nice and tight on there. And now we're ready for the gag. Let's have some fun. All right. Now you always want to leave the pin until you're ready to roll. If it's out, 
you can accidentally hit the trigger and squeeze air and blood through the gag and what that'll do is it'll ruin the wardrobe and get blood on everything you'll have to reset and now production's waiting on you so remember keep the pin in till you're ready to do the gag all right so you can see that the tube is running into the leg and up through the top we made some notches in the tube so that the blood squirts out but now we gotta hide this so we're gonna give it to Joe and he's gonna hold it where the tubes coming in Right, and then we're gonna tape the tube down his arm and run it up to, through his wardrobe. Now, if you look in the back a little bit here and how I'm kind of holding that, I'm putting that right into the palm of my hand so we can just kind of, this naturally flexes right down my wrist and that's where Josh is gonna tape that. All right, so I'm gonna run this down his wardrobe. Now what I'm gonna do is run it down his shirt first, get it all the way through and then run it down his pants. Might be a little awkward as sometimes for some people. Some people don't like to be touched. It's in between the two shirts. There we go. Some don't care. This is the part I like. All right, it's going down. It's down by my knee. All right, uh, another important thing you should remember is your tube should be long enough for you to be out of camera's way and not in the shot. So I had enough room to run down his arm, down his body, and away from the scene. You sometimes might need more length on the tube, but for this gag, it's perfect. All right, now we're gonna apply the medical tape. So they make different grades of medical tape. Some's clear, some's not. This stuff's white. I like the medical tape because it's made to stick to skin, so it won't fall off during the take. So we're gonna tape this to Joe's arm in just a few spots. I think even if he was wearing a long sleeve shirt, it would be safe to tape it so you don't see the tube hanging on the shirt. Now I think this is fine. I could throw one on his elbow, but I don't think it's so necessary right now. So now from your angle, you shouldn't see the tube. No, you don't. So that's one way to hide the tube. All right, now there's one more step that you do before you start rolling, and that's called bleed the line. So what that does is we're gonna push the blood all the way up the line so it's right about here, so that on action, I get blood immediately. So let's do that. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? I'm gonna pull the pin, because we're ready to do that. So we're gonna bleed this line. And you just release a little pressure, and watch the blood come out. Come up here, right? Oh, yeah, follow here. it up. Oh, it. But just don't do too much pressure. All of a sudden, you'll have blood going everywhere. Should be coming out of here in a second. There it is. Bring it right up there. Bam. Now we're ready to shoot the gag. All right, so the first one we're going to do is a little pumping action, as if the heart was still beating, even though there's no heart in the leg. <laughs> and action. All right, that's kind of fun. You know, it's whatever. So now we'll just give a little drizzle. Wait, wait for it. So now that's a good drizzle of it just pouring blood. Now you guys want to see something really fun? This is the animation shot. You might need to back up for this. This is when you open up the extinguisher wide and all that pressure comes out. Here we go. <laughs> That's pretty fun. I love that one. Right. You can Let's cut, take right? a look it's at the cameraman's. All right. And this is why you want to stay out of the way. This is why you tell your DP to get a piece of plexiglass and a trash bag to put over themselves. Ready for this? You're gonna get stabbed in the head. I hope you like it. Oh, uh, this is our buddy. This is our buddy. <laughs> this is Silent Joe. He's our crash test dummy. We're not as rich as Mythbusters, so we use foam bodies for our gags. And this one's pretty cool because you can do it with multiple types of weapons. It could be a knife, it could be an axe, it could be a hammer. Either way, we're gonna hit this guy in the back of the head and he's gonna bleed. What's happening, Silent Me? You ready for this? I need my knife back. <laughs> Got my knife back. That's right. All right, so in this next scene, we're going to show you how effective a pressure extinguisher can be for doing an exit wound.
See, this is what I'm talking about. I love this. Look at the splat. It's a beautiful splat created by compressed air, which is free. Imagine if you tried to do this in CG. All the keying and rotoscoping you'd have to do, and if you have to pay somebody, it would be a lot more cost effective to just use compressed air, which is free, and it took us a minute. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's tutorial. I also wanted to let you know that we showed you three cool gags, but you can do so many more. You just gotta be creative and the pressurizer will do it all for you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Leave us a comment. Also, as soon as this video is posted up, we're running a two week promotion on our product line, Sin Blood. 50% off any order. All you gotta do is private message us and we'll get back to you. Till then, we'll school you on the next one.